Our scripture reading this morning comes from Luke 1, verses 46 to 55. It's called Mary's Song. And Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, even as he said to our fathers. And Mary stayed with Elizabeth for about three months and then returned home. Here ends the reading for today. for a second there the sermon had been cut for the day you guys were off the hook right <laughs> so welcome to the uh, third week in advent the week when we light the pink candle of joy now we got a little bit of information today about that during our children's message but have you ever wondered why we light the pink candle on the third week of advent <clears throat> So I have to tell you, the church that I grew up in, uh, we never lit candles because we didn't even have candles in the church. Um, And we certainly didn't have an Advent wreath. Oh, and there was no Christmas tree either. Okay. Uh, So I tell you that to to tell you this. When I began to uh, attending the Methodist church, I was really confused my first Advent season. Uh, first of all, I, I looked around and the the church had been transformed, right? Like oh, it seemed like overnight that it happened and, and it was beautifully decorated. I, I loved it, um, but it was very different from what I had grown up with. And so I was very confused and I looked up at the wreath and I, I looked and I thought, okay, we've got four candles. It's four weeks in Advent. That makes sense. Surely... Since we have three purple ones and one pink one, we'll light all three purple ones, and then we'll light the pink one. That made sense to me. I I thought I had it nailed. I I was like, great, I've got it. I don't even have to bother anyone about asking a question of why we do this. Um, So I felt like I had it. So week one, purple candle gets lit. Week two, purple candle gets lit, and I think, all right, I was right. Awesome. I I, I figured it out. And then the third week happened. And they stood up, and whoever did it that that, uh, particular week, they lit the pink candle. So I was just so surprised. Um, I I actually thought that they had made a mistake. Uh, I was sitting there thinking, oh no, they lit the wrong candle. Is anyone going to tell them they lit the wrong candle? Or are we just all going to ignore it and act like it didn't happen, and then next week we'll fix it, no big deal? So as it turns out, uh, as it often does in my life, I was wrong. Uh, and they were right. So the candle of joy is week three, and indeed it is the pink candle. So why a pink candle? Well, it comes from an old tradition of Gaudet Sunday, um, and you'll have to excuse me if I mispronounce that because my Latin is non-existent, almost. Um, so uh, the Latin uh, word Gaudet means to rejoice. In all Gaudet Sunday, it was common for priests in the Catholic Church to wear rose or pink colored vestments that day. Now in the Protestant church, it has become our tradition to light a pink or rose colored candle on that third Sunday. So there you go. That is why we have the pink candle of joy. Now maybe you knew all of that. Maybe that's not new, uh, new information for you. Or maybe you did learn something today. Uh, and I have to say that I get great joy 
out of learning new things. I hope that you do. Um, I was that weird kid in uh, elementary school who would sit and read the encyclopedia. Like, not actually pick out a topic and then read the encyclopedia, like grab A and like read Aardvark and then keep going down the list. Um, it was kind of an odd thing I did. Now, um, younger kids, an encyclopedia is like a book um, that has lots of information in it. You can think of it as the book form of Google. Um, it's probably the way that you could think about it. So I, I would do that as a child. And, and, and I, because I really like to learn new things, it gives me great joy. But here's the thing about learning new things. Not long after you learn them, um, they just become one more thing that you know. Like you lose the joy of having learned it. It just becomes something that you know. Now, most of you, if not all of you at this point, uh, know that I grew up playing soccer. Um, this will actually probably be the first year that I don't play some sort of organized soccer for uh, quite some time. And in playing soccer, there is no greater joy in the game, uh, unless you're a goalie, in score than scoring a goal, right? It's the best feeling that you can have when you play soccer. Uh, so in my life, I've scored over 100 goals easily, and I know that that sounds like an impressive number, right? 100 goals, wow, that's great. Uh, but if you average that out over the 36 years that I've been playing, um, it's a little less than three a year. So it's not really that impressive of a, of a number. Um, but I can tell you that each and every time I did score a goal, there was a moment of joy that I had in my life, a, 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 a yes, I did it. Because it's not an easy thing to do. I, I love to watch the little kids play and see when they score a goal and just how excited they are when somehow magically the ball goes into the net because um, at age six and under, it does seem like magic when someone actually scores a goal. Um, and so the, you know they get so excited, it's great. So even though I know I was joyful in those moments that I scored, um, I can only honestly remember maybe five of the goals that I've scored in my entire life uh, that actually have any memory in my brain. Uh, because there was a joy in the moment, but there was, it's not the type of joy that lasts forever. It's a fleeting joy. Now maybe you can relate to that analogy, maybe, maybe you can't. So think of joy of the world in these terms. You know how happy you are when you buy a new car? And it doesn't have to be a brand new car, just a, a car that's new to you. You know, that feeling of excitement. Oh, what does this button do? Right? You, uh, oh, it has heated and cooled seats. I never have to worry about being cold or hot ever again while I'm riding in my car. Uh, maybe you're a bit older and you can relate to this. Wow, I push a button and all the doors lock. Right? Oh, I push, I push this button and the window rolls down. That's amazing, right? Um, you know, we don't have a lot of the younger kids today, but um, I'll just ask Grant, and I know that you probably don't want me to call on you, but Grant, if I do this, what does that mean in a car? Roll down the window. Okay, awesome. So we're not past that point yet, right? Um, yeah, so right, roll down the window. That still means roll down the window, yet when's the last time someone did this to roll down a window in their car? Uh, because you get excited about all those new things in a, in a vehicle. But the thing of it is, the newness wears off, right? The novelty of having something new, the joy that you got out of having something new, it goes away after a while. Now, hopefully you, you still like it, but most people, they tend to, uh, after a while, maybe a few years, they look around and they see the newer models that are out and uh, all the cool things that they've come up with now, uh, and we begin to lose the joy that we might have felt when we bought that car. See, that is what the joy of the world is like. It comes into your life for brief moments, but very rarely does it stick, a, stick around for very long. After a while, the things that brought us joy, they do tend to fade. Now, of course, there are exceptions to this, right? There are things that are big in our lives. You know, the, the joy of marriage, the joy of the birth of children. Uh, that joy that we experience, it lasts much longer. Uh, hopefully, it lasts much longer, right? Than the joy of something like buying a new car. 
And, and I do believe that we should be thankful for all those moments of joy that we have in our lives, the little ones and the big ones. But the thing of it is, that joy doesn't last like the joy that we can have in our lives because of Jesus. See, that is the joy that we should be most grateful for. The joy that never ends. Now we find that joy expressed today by Mary um, in our scripture from Luke. And, and she says, uh, My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. You know, she's, she's saying, you know, though I am nothing, God still loves me. I rejoice that he cares about me. I rejoice that he's giving me this task of bringing Jesus into the world. Well, I think we have the same, or we should have the same thoughts when it comes to that joy. Though we are lowly, though we are just common people, God still loves us. Even greater, I think, the joy that we find can be expressed in this thought. Though we are sinners, though we are completely unworthy of his love, still he gives it to us freely. He gives it to us in the form of his son Jesus, who he sends to be born into this world and live among us. And then Jesus shows us his love by willingly dying for our sins so that we can be with him for all eternity. See, brothers and sisters, that is the joy that is found in the Lord. The joy that never ends and the joy that is freely available to all that believe. That joy truly begins for us when Jesus comes and is born unto Mary. Now, when we have that joy in our lives and we're able to express it, especially in difficult times, you will find that people of the world don't necessarily like that. They will look and say, how can you be joyful at a time when there are so many things that are wrong with this world? It's almost as if they think that um, we are naive and ignoring all the perils that are happening in the world around us. Well, we are not blind. We know what is happening in the world. We know that those, there are people that are struggling mightily right now. And yet we still have joy. See, we have joy because of the promises of Jesus. And we don't ignore those things that are happening in the world. What we do or what we should do is work in any way that we can to help those that are struggling. Because the joy that is found in this world is fleeting. But the joy that we have in the Lord lasts forever. And we have to do our best to help others find that joy for themselves as well. We must let them know that we continue to have joy in our lives in spite of all the world's problems. And we do this and are able to do this because we have a joy that says, no matter what might happen to me or anyone else, I choose to trust in the promise that Jesus has made to me. See, that is the joy that began that first Christmas, and it carries to this day. So let us be a people that share the joy of Christ with others, not during, just during this season, but always and everywhere that we go. That is my challenge for you this week. Show others the joy that is found in trusting Jesus. Amen.